Hello, and welcome to the show. Now, rolling cars is, as ever, a big part of Fail Race, but sadly, in the last couple of Forza games, it has been increasingly difficult to do. Getting the vehicles to go up on their side, getting the vehicles to almost grip roll, which is essentially what we're going for here, is not so much of a problem. However, actually getting the cars to complete a roll. That is where the challenge comes in because of the magical Forza Force. For whatever reason, and we can't really figure it out, but basically when in the dry you try to roll these cars over, no matter how stupid a jelly car you have, no matter how specifically set up your vehicle is, and no matter how big of a curb you hit, the game just won't let the vehicles roll. There is just something that stops the vehicles from completely going over. Now I say that it is not completely impossible to roll in the dry, certainly not with a jelly car such as this one as we see around the fine corner here, final corner here, sorry, at uh, Lime Rock. It isn't impossible, but it is rather difficult and incredibly, incredibly inconsistent. While yes, we can get it to do things with a jelly car, you try to do it anything outside of a jelly car, very, very, very unlikely to happen because of this peculiar force. You'll see it whenever it goes around whatever whatever corner it might be where the truck will go up onto its side, it'll get so far and then just stop. It's as if it can't go over a certain point. I mean, specifically turn one here at Lime Rock. You can see it's kind of just, it's bouncing up and then being forced wide. So it kind of just almost runs out of magically runs out of grip at a certain point in the corner. It's, yeah. Forza Force is a rather strange thing, and it makes rolling vehicles in the dry incredibly, incredibly, incredibly difficult. Although, <laughs> at lower speeds and very tight corners, sometimes the Hilux will go over. Now, the cure that we have found for this is, of course, to go into the rain, because for, again, whatever reason, Forza Force doesn't work in the rain. Vehicles will tumble over as you would expect them to. Which throws up an interesting conundrum, because in a vehicle like this Hilux, for example, yeah, we can go around a corner and it'll fall over wherever you go, but if you're trying to roll something that's not really likely to roll, you're trying to roll sports cars and supercars and so on, that's a lot more difficult, because you can't make them wobble as such as you can with a Jelly Hilux, this way so they don't have the centre of mass, and none of the circuits that are available in the rain really have big enough curbs to properly launch a vehicle, you know, a vehicle like a supercar onto its side far enough. So while the Jelly Hilux will fall over just about wherever you want it to go, if you were to be trying to roll something a little bit different, it's not, it's not going to happen. Sebring had the best curbs, if you like, for launching cars, but even that was inconsistent at best. And Again, once you started getting to the supercars, it didn't really pan out for most of them. However, however, there is an interesting development. You see, one very specific layout of Sonoma doesn't have Forza Force. Now, uh, various people have told me that Sonoma worked, and I went and tested it, and it never did for me, because the two layouts that I would tend to use, the short layout and the full layout, do still have the Forza Force, but the intermediate layouts for whatever reason, doesn't. Absolutely no clue on this one, but it means that in the dry, the Jelly Hilux will wobble its way off screen. And this is good news because we <laughs> wobble its way back on screen as well. In the dry, you have even more grip, of course, available. The downside of trying to do rolls in the wet is what we're doing here are grip rolls, and uh, often curb-assisted when we're coming to the other cars, but in, in the case of the Hilux, it's grip rolling its way around, which in the wet, well, there is just less grip in general. In the dry, you have got the most grip that, uh, that there is, and when it comes to the supercars that are going to be difficult to get to grip roll, you want to have all of that extra grip. And even better news is that Sonoma has a very, very big curb, which would be useful for launching cars onto their side to give them the initial help to get them up and over. The Hilux is definitely not needing any of that help. Very bouncy and falls over a lot before we even made it a third of the way through the lap. So it was off to investigate what cars could we get to roll around here. And we start with the Porsche 928. You see, this was built to try and roll in Sebring at the wet. And while it got vaguely close, it was never really close enough to actually going over. 
never really looked like it would be able to go over. So this has got race tyres, maximum camber, as high and stiff a suspension as possible. And sure enough, the first attempt at this uh, high curb, that would be the Porsche over and, well, tumbling through the air. Cars are all properly in the dry again. It's brilliant. It was an absolutely brilliant day. The replay camera at this particular corner isn't excellent. However, it could be an awful, awful lot worse. Perhaps one of the things I like most about this corner is there are three or four different kind of approaches you can take to, to potentially get cars to roll over. The Porsche would probably roll over from any of them if you hit the curb well enough. I mean, <laughs> that one there was pretty damn close. Ends up just skidding along on the front bumper. And you don't even need a huge amount of speed because of the severity of the curb. It's a bit of a slow, slow process that time. But yeah, sure enough, the 928 would go over without any real trouble. This was a car that didn't want to roll in the wet at Sebring easily does here at Sonoma so big kind of progress had been made but that was a car specifically designed specifically tuned and set up for rolling what about a vehicle left completely standard this Abarth 695 a completely stock car would hit the curb and that would be immediately over did carry a lot of speed into it but uh, yeah completely standard Abarth and that one there will tumble over as well now I picked this car because it's kind of the right body shape, if you like. Well, it's not going to have as high a central mass as the Hilux. It's also higher than a very, very low, very wide sports car. So I figured that if something was going to be rolling stock, this is the sort of car that would probably go over without too many issues. And sure enough, that was very much the case. Although <laughs> you do still have to hit the curb correctly. It's kind of a, a strange thing. I say a strange thing that you do with it. You kind of want to be driving straight for as long as possible. And just as you hit the curb, be turning in. It was a very, very long way on two wheels. And a peculiar, I could never quite replicate it again. Peculiar endo that the uh, little bath goes for across the, uh, across the curb. But yeah, you, you want to hit the curb with a decent amount of speed and maximum sort of steering input. So you leave it straight until the very, very last second and then you yank the steering to the left or the right, depending on which angle you're taking it at. And yeah, not really a problem with the Abarth. So yeah, two different directions and the 695 Piposto would go for a rather spectacular tumble. Okay, as I said... Not the most difficult car, wasn't expected to be the most difficult vehicle to get rolling, but what about a Mazda MX-5 Super 20? I mean, after all, this is a relatively low sports car. Again, completely stock, not even a huge amount of speed on this first attempt as I was trying to position the car. <laughs> and that, yeah, that went over pretty bloody easy. Of course, both this and the Abarth are relatively high grip cars you know they're relatively handling orientated cars which will help because yeah what we are doing here is getting vehicles to grip roll you are well you're, you're being assisted by a curb in the first place to get the car up into the air but after that it is essentially a grip roll because once the vehicle's on its side you're continuing to steer the wheels and you want the car to have enough grip to uh, to turn itself and continue uh, continue that roll uh, as I said, not, not all the time you hit the curb a little bit wonky. If you don't get it to uh, bounce you up into the air high enough, then you'll just drive over it and it won't look particularly uh, spectacular. But yeah, the MX-5 went over the uh, the first time. I had a couple of uh, slight miscues with the old uh, <laughs> the old driving. I wanted to make it go over again just to prove that it could be done. It was a uh, kind of close call. I say prove that it could be done. Just because, yeah, I wanted to do it again with the car stock. Actually, completely different angle this time. Found a way to get the... <laughs> Master to tumble over. Never been able to replicate that angle again. So admittedly, after the Mazda, we go on to some more difficult cars, which is probably why I couldn't replicate that angle again. But uh, yeah, just a different, a different area of approach, different way you can uh, you can hit the curb. Now, one thing I am curious about is watching the replays. Tire smoke doesn't seem to be coming off the cars, and I wonder whether that's either a replay glitch, but there's a lot of replays that do the same thing, or whether that's a circuit thing, and whether that is something to do with why the Forza Force isn't in effect here. I am, yeah, not sure on that. The next vehicle I moved on to was a Lamborghini, the Centenario. Back on Forza 4, one of the most difficult vehicles. One of the few cars that beat me in the initial time round. I did eventually get to rolling it, but the Lamborghini Aventador proved to be very, very difficult to roll over. So I wanted to have a go with 
well, another Lamborghini in the same scenario I had one sitting around in my garage, made sense to try with this one. Again, car completely stock, and we were back to difficulties, as you would expect. As you would expect, and while of course the Zen Scenario does have a huge, huge amount of grip, it is very, very low, it is very, very wide, and trying to get this car to roll over from standard, of course, is not something that I would ever expect to work. Well, I didn't necessarily expect the MX-5 to be able to tumble over quite as easily as it did. I knew we were likely to have to do some work with the Zen Scenario in these first runs. Well, yeah, sure enough. It gets a little bit onto two wheels, even if you throw it at speed down there. It's a vague vague slight onto two wheels but otherwise yeah it's not gonna happen so it was off to the upgrade shop with this car race tires would be needed maximum tire width as well race suspension stuck on the car anything i can do to get some extra grip out of the vehicle the tires are of course gonna be a significant part of it race tires slick tires gonna give you plenty of grip with the suspension it's all about tuning the suspension raise the right eye up as much as you can now that's not much in the same scenario you can't have this car particularly high uh maximum camber uh, you want on the wheels as well a lot of people like logically thinking you might want the car to have positive camber uh but that doesn't work with the way that we're getting cars to tumble over here you want negative camber when the car's up on its side if you have the car running a lot of positive camber so the wheels at the bottom pointing inwards when the car goes up on its side it then ends up with no tire on the ground at all there's no grip and it will just come crashing back down but not over onto its roof if you have it at negative camber the car goes up onto its side the wheel the bottom of the wheel is sticking out so when it's on its side there's more contact between the tires and the road and that can help pull the car over It'll help pull the car onto its roof that's the theory, and that's what we've seen time and time again when it comes to rolling vehicles. It's how we get the jelly cars to do what they what they do. However, it wasn't really working for the Centenario. I was finding an approach that I liked. I was finding a, a route that I was liking for the Lamborghini. It was the one that looked the most probable, and I was managing to launch the car a fair way onto its side, but actually getting the vehicle all the way up and over wasn't quite happening. Also, suspension-wise, you need the suspension as stiff as possible. We don't want any of the forces essentially being absorbed by the suspension you want them all being used to fire the car onto its side but all of that wasn't quite working for the uh, lamborghini it was getting onto its side but not getting uh not getting over i had to get quite drastic in terms of the upgrades included some aero again more downforce anything i could do to get grip in the car a full roll cage Again, stiffer chassis, uh, the race anti-roll bar, so everything to as stiff as possible. Again, it's trying to force all the energy to go into launching the car onto its side, into launching the car over. However, the Lamborghini was not wanting to play ball. This was something that we came across with the Aventador many, <laughs> many years ago, and the Centenario was putting up a similar fight. I was doing the best that I could. In the end, I actually started adopting a tactic of really firing the car across the car. I was getting a lot of airtime, and it was getting a long way onto its side. I'm not sure if the, the getting the huge amount of airtime was the best tactic I've ever done. There are, there are plus sides and there are downsides. The plus side is it gets a lot of, it gets a lot of airtime, it gives it more time to twist over, but you also run the risk of hitting the kind of left-hand side wheels off the curb as well and it kind of balancing the car, whereas you really want the car to kind of drop the left-hand side as much as possible. I tried this quite a few times. Now, we did get something out of all this. We did get the Centenario to tumble over. It's a weird one, though. This is a very, very peculiar one because, of course, the rules and the challenge with this series come from not rolling the car sideways on the grass because you can do that with anything at a high enough speed. It's about launching cars off the curbs, but the Centenario does go for a roll kind of off a curb. So the main curb that we're hitting here is enough to once more fly the car, sends it in the air, it gets a long way onto its side, but it's still not quite enough to go over. As the car comes back down, I'm still steering that way, and we get a little bit of a slide. It's across this secondary curb. Now, this is the curb that launches the car up into the air. And then it kind of digs into the grass. I'm not quite sure how how much grass assisted all of that is if it had been a tarmac runoff area i don't think the car would have rolled over but it does get launched a long way on its side the kind of amount that the vehicle is going sideways across the grass there isn't enough for it to have rolled on its own the curb did play a part 
in launching the vehicle over. It was, yeah, a peculiar one. The Centenario did did roll in the end, a slightly different manner from what we have seen in the past. It was then onto a race car. Now, these can sometimes be easier to roll and sometimes not. Again, it all comes down to we're trying to grip roll the cars. Race cars have a lot of grip. Good for rolling, but race cars are very low. And that's not so good for for rolling. I mean, the first run, again, this McLaren, completely stock. So that, that first run was more promising than we had seen from uh, some cars. And I was hoping that this particular angle of approach, again, we could go for the launch the vehicle into the air. Uh, not quite such a, a good attempt uh, for, <laughs> for me on the first one there. I had hoped... That it, that it might kind of work. Yeah, it, it launches itself onto its its side better than, certainly better than the Lamborghini did when being run completely stock. But in terms of likelihood to roll over in this condition, no. And again, I wouldn't expect, I wouldn't expect the McLaren to be able to uh, roll over, roll over stock. Now, with a race car, there is far less you can do in terms of upgrades, but it does start on race tyres. It's got adjustable suspension and so on. So, sure enough, it was race, different suspension, a maximum camber, as big a tyres as we could. I think the roll cages and so on is already all fully upgraded. Make everything as stiff as possible. And again, it was a bit more promising than the Lamborghini in the kind of nature in which it was getting up onto its side. It was a little bit more looking a little bit more likely. It also had a little bit more ground clearance. Again, it's not a huge amount, but a little bit more than the Lamborghini. Sure enough, throw it at the curb, get a decent amount of air tire, <laughs> find a different tire bundle. It would be helpful if I could remove all of the tire bundles around this particular area for trying to roll cars, but it's a better curb than we've seen in the past to experiment with. And there were some very big flights. Again, it's another curb that we see kind of have the initial thing, and as we bounce across a secondary curb, as again, it's another very, very big tip on to its side, but at that particular angle, no grass around to uh, help it, and uh, we bounce our way into the tyre wall once more. We were seeing very, very similar things, again, with the McLaren. It, it got a little closer, I think, than the Centenario. It looked like it was getting kind of further onto its side, but it was never really enough to roll the car over. It had a big, big launch, and again, the McLaren goes for an identical tumble to the Lamborghini. It was enough to get onto its side, and the curb help, helped launch it up to the point at which the front splitter kind of digs into the floor, and that then sees the McLaren tumble over. I think the big problem we were seeing with the McLaren and with the Lamborghini is the front of the car getting caught on the floor. And with these low-slung race cars, supercars, uh, with splitters, and, and in the Lamborghini's case, a very long nose, that will catch on the floor so you're, you're you're wanting the back wheel's kind of where i want it but as the front comes down it's going to get caught on the uh, the splitter and it's going to bounce the car back down as the suspension at the front there compresses a bit it's going to bounce the car back down and that's causing problems it's basically bouncing it the wrong way and the splitter i think is always going to end up clonking into the floor before we can ever get enough grip to roll the car over so yeah the Chances of the McLaren going over are uh, pretty slim. Uh, well, I say pretty slim. We got it to roll, but that was with a little bit of grass and a little bit cheeky. We couldn't end on that note. We needed a more positive... I mean, cars rolling in the dry again is, is pretty damn positive, but I uh, wanted to end on a success. Thought we'd have a go with the Alfa Romeo Giulia. This, the car back to being completely stock. Perhaps didn't quite expect to see this one go over immediately. Uh... However, there were signs that it was a lot more likely with this car. One thing that I have quickly seen from kind of editing with these replays and so on, if the vehicle is spending a long time on two wheels, whether that long time on two wheels leads to it falling over or not, if it's spending a long time up on its side, that's generally a positive that it will be able to roll. The McLaren and the Lamborghini were very, very quick to go up on the, up onto their side and then slam back down onto four wheels. Whereas the Alfa Romeo here, while not going to go over uh, while stock, stays on its side 
for a lot longer before gravity eventually wins and the car comes crashing back down. It's not as it's not as violent, it's not as sharp, which means when we apply some upgrades, it's a lot more likely to tumble over. Now I did try the car with just the suspension upgrades, so raised ride height, stiffened suspension and camber, etc. That wasn't quite enough. It got close. The Julia did get close to going over, but it wasn't going to be quite enough to see the vehicle tumbling over and out, so I did have to go and get some race tyres on the car. First attempt, we did get it a fair way onto its side. Um, not the not the greatest. I'm, I don't know. I'm not a massive fan of that particular approach for <laughs> for, for hitting the curb. You're kind of left with a little bit of an awkward an awkward turning from that angle. As I said, this one much much preferred route and sure enough it is uh second time lucky we do meet a tire bundle for the uh for an extra twist on the landing but again that's the the length of time it's spending on two wheels it's not being slammed back down onto the ground because it's scraping the splitter along the floor or something it has it has the time but we can use the grip when it's up on its side we can use the grip from the big tires uh, with the camber and so on to help drag the car over onto its roof because when it's up on that side that the center of mass is then kind of moved i guess quite high up and then it's more likely to fall over the longer we can hold it there yeah it didn't didn't take much and then <laughs> on the return journey as well was a big big tumble for the Julia, so that one would certainly certainly roll the big supercars the race cars will prove difficult I think I'm going to have to do. I got some tire smoke going on from from this car on this particular replay. I don't know why the other one. Maybe it's to do with the time of day, or uh, maybe it's to do with this bit of road actually, because it's only on that runoff area. Strange. Um, yeah, the the race cars, supercars are going to be difficult, but I think I will play around. Maybe I'll have to do some little different tweaks and changes to the setups on those that perhaps I haven't used in the past to get those cars to a tip over. However, I am excited to see what we can get uh, what we can get to roll. Will there be cars that do truly beat me on this game? Do let me know in the comments section down below what cars you want to see me try to uh, try to roll. That though is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, uh, goodbye.